welcome back to the channel i'm eric today we're going to basically build up a block train so i've been thinking lately about what i can do rolling stock wise on my layout and i've got a lot of mishmash of items which some work together some don't and i'm often stuck with what to actually run so i want a decent train that i can just chuck on the layout it's more of like a permanently together uh, train so it all goes in one rake and uh, that will run happily around the layout quite nicely. So obviously sticking to the London Underground theme, I've got a lot of the XEFE unpowered tube stock sets. So 1938 and 1959-62 stock sets. Now, as I say, they're unpowered. I've got one here in front of me. This is what they look like. You might think these look familiar. That's because... The new motorised version of this train is coming out in January via the LT Museum. So if you've not ordered one yet, get yourself over to their website and have a look. But yes, these were a die-cast chassis and pretty awful bogies, which had no bearings, nothing like that. They didn't run very freely and basically you couldn't really use them on the model railway. However, I do have a good friend called John Polly might have heard of his name before if you're into model tube trains because he was the founder of Metro Models. Now he has sadly sold Metro Models to Phoenix Precision Paints I believe nowadays so he's out of the game however um, I still chat to him he's a great friend and before he sold up I actually bought a load of bogey frames off him and a load of wheel sets for motorizing these before the new 38 and 59 stock by EFE Rail came out. So I've got an abundance of these in the cabin. I've got two sat here already. I've got a trailer car and a DM. I've got a spare DM chassis, uh, which is also from a 62 stock. And uh, I'm pretty sure down the cabin, I've got a few bits and bobs that I can make use of. So the thinking here is I could build an unpowered forecast set and uh, I've found some pictures online of delivery trains for tube stock. And they generally consist of VDA vans and an old diesel such as a 37. So I don't have an old 37 anymore. However, I've got modern ones, so we can have a bit of a modern twist with my ROG one, for example, or something like that, maybe West Coast. Um, however, at the Wally Show, as you would have seen in my 10K subs video, I did pick up two of these VDA vans, well, I actually bought four. Two of them were by mistake because uh, they were the wrong livery. And then I found these, which is the livery I wanted. So I found some old photos of, uh, it was actually an A stock being delivered and it had these VDA vans, the gray um, with the yellow ends. And these happened to be weathered anyway. And I got them for, a, I think it was 40 quid. And they're Backman ones, so they're far superior to the Hornby versions and they've got the correct roofs and stuff. So I couldn't really say no. So what I'm gonna do on these is I'm actually gonna cut the buffers off of one end of each one, and I'm gonna cut the draw hooks off, and then I'm gonna to have to make up some sort of custom coupling adapter so that I can go from there to there. So obviously it's gonna be quite a low profile sort of thing, but um, hopefully we can create a nice pair of match wagons that way. Obviously um, you would have a custom coupling one end and standard coupling the other. If you don't want to run it with the tube train in the middle, you, of course, just run two of these back to back and uh, that will work quite happily. So um, anyway, I will also get the other one of these out of the box. We'll look at modifying that. Uh, but first, we're going to go and see if we can find enough of these tube cars to make this work. So down to the cabin we go. Oh, it's a bit dark. One, two, three. Lovely. So, if you're a bit of a hoarder like me, then, well, I'd say hoarder, probably more of a magpie. I see something that's shiny on eBay, and I buy it, and then I basically sit on it, not physically, because it would be very squashed with the size of me, um, but I hang on to stuff. And lo and behold, there's another DM car because I was going to create the rat train, which is this. I did get around to doing one. So again, that is 
actually a non-powered one, so that's not been converted. So I could use the chassis worst case. That, if you haven't seen this before, on the central line in a, the uh, winter months, they run what is called the Rat Train. It's the Rail Adhesion Train. And it's a 1962 stock car that's been modified that sprays sand on the tracks. So if you wondered what that is that's been in the background all this time, there you go. So I am plan to do a four car, maybe a five. I think it, yeah, the West End one is a five car. There's two, one's an eight car, one's a five car. Um, anyway, I'll, stop, I'll shut up, but I plan to make one of them. Under here, <laughs> this is like the treasure chest under the layout. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Ignore all the wires hanging down, but we might have a tube train or two. In fact, that's a 62 stock car. And we've got the chassis. That is, of course, one that I would turn into the wrap because all I have to do is paint the doors white and paint the ends grey and mess about with a few little bits. So that's one. And we've got another back there i think yep yeah. there's also 38 stock cars everywhere as you can see so we've got those two got a couple chassis there there's there's the third one is that a 38 yeah, that's 38 there's the third body so we've got that one as well um now do i have any silver ones doesn't look like i do up here so i might have to get creative because i'm sure i'm sure i've got a four car silver set so bear with me and i'll dig them out oh, i just did a remember they're my spare cars i've actually got a four car motorized set that i did so i'm gonna nick the trailer out of it so hopefully in here dun 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 so now it all makes sense this is my motorized set so that one's got twin motor bogies in these are 10 Shodos though, so they're absolutely naff. So I can't wait for the new release to come out. However, I was going to rebody these with the rat cars, which you can see down there. That was the reason I was repainting them. However, now I suppose because I've got four 38 stock sets and I'm never gonna need four, I can always um, buy the new 59 stock that's coming out via the museum and then instead use those bodies up there on either these chassis or one of my four 1938 stock sets and then keep these chassis for something else. But anyway, bang, as he breaks his uh, precious little tube trains, we have got these ones. Oh, they're actually slightly different, I've just noticed. So these trailers have LT on the center cars and these ones don't and they look a bit cleaner. I think this is the Piccadilly, I think the ones we were out of the Piccadilly set, if I remember. Um, I must have changed the seats over from blue to red or something because there's two different types. Although we might be um, in a bit of luck here because of course I can instead now just use these two trailers and they've already got the up got the uprated wheel sets so that saves me a little bit of work so that will just be the dms to modify so it just gets better thinking about this i can just share the two trailer cars in whatever um consist i want basically so if i want to run the motorized set i use the motorized dms if i want to run the drag set i use the non-powered dms oh my genius so there's the forecast set that we're going to use to make up this train. Obviously, I do have a spare body that I could find a chassis for to make a five car if I ever can be bothered. But uh, we'll keep it simple for this video. So as I say, these two have been converted with the new Metro Models bogies. If I just move those all up, you can see this here. Look. They roll as well as most rolling stock you'll find out there. So they're quite a simple little wheel set. And I believe these are the ones without actually the Romford bearings in. So normally I fit Romford bearings, but obviously on this occasion I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> However, being pinpoint axles now, they are obviously pretty decent. Let me just chuck that back on there. Like so. They're a bit fiddly because of the height. There you go, that's back on. But yeah, that rolls nice and free. So is that one, of course. If we move those out of the way, this is the standard one. 
So there's a lot of resistance there and they pretty much stop dead. So these are the bogeys underneath and obviously we're gonna take those out and replace them. So they do literally just pop out like so. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cut the center out of the bogey frame. So this center square, helps if you can see it if I zoom in, this center square piece that you can see there, I'm actually gonna chop that out and I will glue that onto the new bogies and then it will sit under the train and be able to clip in. Here's the uh, different bogies then. So this is the upgraded Metro model bogey. This is the standard one. Whee! Here it goes. Um, this is how it comes. So it does have this top hat originally. That's because if you use it with the Metro models body shells, so you would have seen under the desk earlier, I had a four car D stock and a four car 92 stock, for example. For using in those, then you need those sort of spacer pieces. But for using in the tube stock, you chop those off. And as I say, you chop that square piece out and normally you glue it underneath like so. However, before I glue it, I'm actually gonna try it on top just to give me a little more ground clearance. The new EFE Rail 38 stock and the 59s actually sit a little bit higher than these ever did anyhow. So I might get away with it. I have seen it previously where people have done it this way and then fitted a small fiber washer, same as these. However, the way mine are done, um, they're a little bit too low, so I can't actually get the washer in there, which is a bit of a shame because it would space it up to about the perfect sort of amount. So yeah, I'm gonna try and fit that mount on the top instead on one bogey frame and see what it's gonna look like. But it might not work, it might work, who knows? So we'll uh, just have to wait and see really. Now, I couldn't work out how to get some extra height without doing this, but uh, in the end I gave in. And on the left is the new bogey and on the right is one of the normal Metro Models ones with the center pivot fitted underneath. So I've instead glued the center pivot on, then marked around it, then cut the square out and then slotted the center in and glued it in there. That gives me just that extra mill or so. And uh, it actually brings it in line perfectly with the modern EFE tooling. Obviously, these are a different chassis altogether, they're plastic, but it brings it to the same height as those, which I'm happy with. The only thing, of course, is this naturally is going to be quite weak. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some Gorilla two-part epoxy and uh, put that around the join. So uh, that will strengthen all that up. I can't really put anything on the top, maybe a very thin smear, but of course, I've got to keep it out of the way of the centre casting. So that's going to be a, a lot of fun. <laughs> um, but hopefully this will make it run a bit better because an issue you have with these is they sit so close to the floor. The bogies sometimes, you've got any little bit of uneven track and the bogies can jam up and cause derailments. So this will just give me that extra mill or so that I would sort of require to give me a bit more play. So hopefully that's going to work out. So we've got a bit of a crude coupling set up, sorted now, as you can kind of see. It needs a bit of tweaking and still obviously I've got to strengthen the couplings up and mess about with that screw. But these are the um, original couplings that come with the old non-motorised EFE trains. You've got the long one, which is for if you ever want to motorise it and run it around a layout. And the short one is more of a display coupling for coupling the cars up in close uh, formation. The long one, as you can see here, I've actually drilled them out previously because the Metro model bogies, the little coupling pin that sits there is slightly fatter than the original bogies. So that's why they're drilled out, which is no problem for us. Um, what I'm gonna do is I've basically got the small one, I've chopped one end off, and then this end I've squared it off and I've pushed it into a NEM coupling pocket adapter. I'll just turn it upside down. So it's pushed into one of these pockets and uh, with a bit of glue on the back, hence it's all ghosted up like that, or frosted, whatever you want to call it. Then the larger coupling, of course, goes on this end. However, because the heights are different, I've, again, cut that in half. I've filed it down so it's nice and smooth on both, on, um, both the mating sides. And then I've glued it one piece on top of the other, as you can tell. That brings the height of this piece up. Oh, I can separate it like that. That brings the height up 
as you can see, which obviously um, is gonna help. It doesn't bring it up quite enough though, which is where, also using old EFE parts, these are the screws that screw the trains into their display plimps with these holes originally. Now these screws, if you don't drill these coupling bars out, they actually screw into them quite nicely. So obviously being as I've drilled the big ones out, um, I can put the screw straight through the big ones and then screw into the little ones. And um, that's what's gonna give me obviously that slight uh, gap there because of the difference in height, which in turn will allow it all to move. But what I may do is I may just put a little um, spacer in there or a piece of heat shrink or something. But I think that solution is gonna work. Of course, I will chop the screw off at the top and make that flush. And I will um, use some epoxy resin just to smooth this out and obviously give it a lot more strength. And then that should work quite happily. So these VDA vans obviously need a little bit of modifying so they can haul the tube stop round. Now, it's nothing serious. All I'm going to do is basically lob the buffers off, take the draw hook out, and then uh, pretty much that's about it, really. Obviously, I have to make up some couplings as well. But uh, yeah, so I'll get my Stanley blade. Uh, well, saying that, I'll get some snips. I'll snip the main bit of the buffer off. Then I'll use the Stanley blade just to sort of cut it off flush. There we go then, easy as that. So you can see there, the buffers have been taken off and they're now flush. So you've just got a square where they used to be. Obviously, um, I can always sort that out with a little bit of paint and uh, a splattering with the airbrush. But in any case, you probably won't really see it by the time it's got a tube train butted up next to it. But yeah, obviously uh, it's a necessary thing anyway. The real, um, the real cars would have either some sort of wedge lock adapter down the bottom or they would have a bar sticking out um, with obviously an adapter to bring it down to tube height. So um, I, I haven't got a picture of how the back of the wagon actually looks. So I'm just basically going off a rough sort of thing. But in any case, this sort of scale, you're not really gonna notice it anyway. As long as the tube car, I can get it nice and close then uh, it won't really matter. There's the uh, coupling between the VDA van and the 1962 stock that I've made. Fits uh, nice and close, but they've got enough to pivot round. And I've even put wedge locks, the fake wedge lock couplers on the end. So it looks like it's the actual sort of thing pivoting underneath. So uh, yeah, we'll have Four cars of this, maybe five if I find another trailer chassis. Obviously the VDA vans and then uh, whatever local I can be asked to get working. So next up, I want to put a flashing tail lamp on this because it's something I neglect on a lot of this sort of stuff and I want to buck my ideas up. So <laughs> I've got these spring side lamps, I've had them for a while. They are just drilled out and they've got a tiny little 402 red LED installed in them with a little bit of a uh, red clear red paint from Tamir as a lens. I've got these little pickups from DCC Concepts. They're not very good because the uh, they, they cause a lot of friction. The main Achilles heel is because the pickup is so short, there is, um, there's not enough sort of flex in them. So they cause a lot of tension on the wheels. So it takes a lot of messing around to get stuff to run nicely with them and you'll never get it perfect. But in any case, um, so I fitted one of the lamps to this, which is gonna be the rear van. So you can see it there, it is fitted to the coupling hook and there's just, um, the wire just runs inside like that. Put a bit of tape on there, just in case I snag the wire, it means it doesn't pull it out the back of the LED. Instead, it just pulls the tape, so that's fine. And the chassis, here is the chassis. So I've just taken the wheels out um, because they've got a coating on them. And obviously I want decent pickup. So on this one, I just sanded the coat off by hand. On this one, I got lazy and I realized I could fit them in the drill. So you can see there, that's, uh, oh, it's not very good quality, is it? But you can see there in the drill, I've taken the coating off and it come off a lot nicer than that one. But that one is in now and done, so it'll be all right. But yeah, you can see um, where I'm fitting the pickups. So they're just gonna go on these little pieces here. So obviously I've got this one to do. Because obviously I'm doing this and there's gonna be wires running in. Um, it's a bit of a silly, silly sort of setup with these VDA vans. To get them, to get the body off, you can see these lugs that go in the body there. The screws to release the body actually sit under these bits. So you can't, I can't really obviously show you now because I've drilled it. 
but normally uh, this hole isn't here so to remove the body you have to take the wheel set out then take that screw out and then the other screw is hidden underneath so instead what i did is i fitted these i have uh, without the wheels i put it up this way um, straighten them out and then i ran a drill a small drill down that way and then took them off and used a bigger drill bit to drill out this section and that then means that when i come to fit the little screws rather than take the this wheel set assembly out i can simply slot the screws up in there and uh, it'll be a lot easier so that just means i'll never have to take this section off again and uh, i can just solder the wires to here for pickups go straight in the body and uh, wire it all up and then literally fit it together but yeah all i'm doing um, is i'm going to take this one out again i'm just going to smooth that ridge off so i'll chop that off with the stanley blade and i'll go over it with a bit of sandpaper just so it's a nice flat surface and then i'm simply going to super glue another one of these pickups in on there and then for the actual line itself have i got it here i appear to have lost it yet again <laughs> uh, there it is so i've got this which is a flash and tail out module from illuminated models i did previously fit it in something and change my mind so i glued it in somewhere hence some of the coatings come off the outside of this it doesn't really matter um yeah it's just a flash and tail out module so the power from the pickups goes in here and the power to the led comes out there so uh, i'm just going to experiment with a a loose led first just to make sure that i don't need a resistor because i'd rather blow a random floating around led than blow the one that's in that lamp and waste that lamp so I will hook this up to the pickups and then quickly just hook a random LED up to the pads and then see if it works. That's the uh, van then all wired in. You can see, as I say, the wires just come up there. They loop round, go on to the power terminals. Obviously, if you're doing something like this, just leave a little bit of extra wiring just in case for some strange reason you knock it one, one day and you accidentally break one of the solder connections because it just would give you a little bit extra where you can take a bit more insulation off and just reconnect it. This end, I have added a resistor after a little bit of testing. I found it was a little bit bright. Um, I tried it with a white LED at first. As I said, I just tried a random one and I found it was very bright. So I put this LED uh, resistor in, sorry, and that toned the white down. So now I've hooked the red up. And uh, now if we put it together, I haven't tested it yet. Hopefully we'll be able to just sit that on there just for now. And we'll chuck it on the track. So now it's turned on. So we'll put it on over here. Hopefully it will, oh, there we go. Lovely, that'll do nicely. Only problem is, um, it is the old sort of flash rate. So back in the day, before the current modern image lamps, which flash once every two seconds, I believe the older lamps flash a little bit more slowly, so probably a bit more in keeping with this. However, when this train was actually running around in sort of the late 90s, I believe it was, it probably would have been these lamps anyway, so I'm not overly fussed, and at least there's something on there. But um, yeah, that'll just finish it off nicely. So I'll chuck the screws back in the van, box it all up nicely, and uh, away we go. Well then, I'm pleased that we now have that full rake sorted. As I think I briefly touched on earlier, I might include a fifth car in the centre, because I do have one spare trailer chassis, and I think I've got enough bits to make up a set of 62 bogies as well, um, as spares that I found floating about. So I might add in another trailer to make it a five car. But in any case, really pleased. It's obviously a nice length train, as you can see. It's uh, pretty decent. We just need a nice logo to pull it. And with all the work converting the bogies to the Metro Models type and the pinpoint wheels, I believe the wheels are off a Lomac wagon. So if you look out for those, I think they're 9mm wheels, then uh, they should do you right. But with all that work, we now have a free rolling train. As you can see, it does roll nicely. Obviously, we've got it nice and close coupled between the VDA van and the tube stock. We've got the flashing tail lamp, so that's a, a nice little touch. Um, it is still a very heavy train, but of course you've got to bear in mind that being the original EFE release, these do have die cast chassis, so they are a heavy model anyway. But if we have a nice big diesel, we should have no problem with that. And the weight, if anything, will help keep them on the track. So talking of big diesels, earlier on this year, I went to the Backman Practically Perfect sale because I'm a Collector's Club member and I picked up this. 
Now, when this was released, I looked at that and thought, oh, that's a wicked looking model with the sort of really run down paint job. And uh, I was thinking, what could I use that for? And I, c I couldn't really justify it. So I thought, no, I'll leave it. I'll, I'll spend my money on something else. And then, as I say, I went to the Pr Practically Perfect sale. And lo and behold, one of these were in the sale. I can't remember the reason why it was returned now. It was something very silly. But in any case, I picked it up. And I thought, well, it's cheap enough that in the future, if I use it, happy days. If I don't, I could always sell it on. And it just so happens that it's probably around the right sort of era for running this kind of train. So, obviously, at the minute, it's uh, DCC ready. As you can hear. <laughs> so, it doesn't like sitting on the track. However, I was even luckier in the sense that it is a deluxe model. So, you can see by it's got the tinted glazing. And it does also have the rotating roof fans. All they did was take the sound decoder out and, of course, probably use it for a different model. So I won't have to do a lot with it. It could do with a bit more weathering, I think, just to sort of tie in the underframe with all of this nasty peeling paint. I think that looked really good. If it had a few spots, a few spots of rust on it as well, it looked quite nice. So that's something to do in the long term, really sort of dirty it up and make it filthy. Obviously, had a crew as well. Um, but what I think I'm going to do is find one of my models that's got a Plux 22 decoder in and fit it in this. If not, I will rob the decoder out of my um, Intercity 47, which is, of course, the same model underneath, just so that I can run it. But yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll get a decoder in this and uh, let's see how this train runs around the layout. So bear with me. So all sorted then, back in the house, and must admit, I'm pretty pleased with how that's come out. So obviously, I wanted to set out to do a four car, 62 stop drag sort of set, and then obviously loco, I can just choose that as and when, and uh, I think it's turned out pretty good. As you can see, we've got it running around the layout, and uh, I'm happy that I've now got an extra train that I can run, rather than constantly 
forcing my Pullman coaches upon you all because that's all I ever seem to run in video clips. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that sort of video. And uh, if you did, let me know in the comments and I'll try and do something else along those sort of lines in future. But in any case, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, I will see you next time. Cheers. Bye.